Australia's asylum seeker crisis is being overshadowed by one building in the Middle East where almost two million people have been displaced by the Syrian civil war. Many wind up in Jordan and the Zatari refugee camp where a Seven News crew met people who'd like to come down under. These are the faces of Syria's civil war, virtually begging for their daily bread. Just some of the 1.7 million Syrians who have fled their country. Many to Jordan and places like Zatri refugee camp, 10 k's from the border. Less than a year ago, none of this was here. Now it's a virtual city for almost 200,000 people, making it the fifth largest population center in Jordan. But the kingdom's hospitality has limits. Zatri is dusty, dirty, dangerous. Water and sanitation are problems. People have a frustration because they expect all of us to do more about the Syrian crisis. This man paid $150 to move his shed to a better site, but the land is not for sale. Does he understand that it's not possible? Many hope to go home. Others would like a new life, somewhere like Australia. Daryl Ainsworth distributes supplies. So 3,000 walk through the gates right now, you, you're prepared for That's that. That's right. He's a former army officer, a Vietnam vet. I think of when I'm back in Madonga and you see mum and dad and the three kids walking down the street. These people here are exactly the same as that. This man was a university lecturer. Would you like to go back to Syria? No. Another who would like to come to Australia is Raed, if only for the medical care. He was shot fetching bread. And you were smuggled across the border to Jordan? His leg is shattered, infected. Doctors want to amputate. Raed says no. There are so many like him. Another camp is under construction an hour away. It seems hard to believe just by looking at it, but in less than a month's time, this 25-kilometre stretch of unforgiving desert will become home to the world's newest refugee camp. Today, it's home to Andrew Harper, the Aussie overseeing the UN refugee program. These are really good tents and almost work in any environment around the world, except here. Here is scorching desert, 45 degrees in the shade, if you can find any. But it's ground zero for a global problem. If the reason for people being displaced is not resolved, then people will go, um, they'll find internal displacement first, then they'll go regionally, then they will go further afield. Doctors here say they don't have the resources to save Raed's leg, but Australia does. In Jordan, Steve Pennells, Seven News. And tomorrow night our crew gets exclusive access to no man's land, the desolate border zone where Syrians make their dash for freedom. Now to our series on refugees, and each day thousands of Syrians fleeing civil war risk their lives crossing a desert into neighbouring Jordan. A Seven News crew was the first allowed access to the unfenced border zone, finding families desperate to save their children. This is Mad Max territory, no man's land between Jordan and Syria. We're the first journalists given access to Jordan's desolate eastern border. The army patrols it, but they're not there to turn Syrians away. They find refugees and bring them to safety. Yeah, yes. Waiting on the other side of this hill are about 30 men, women and children. Their luggage is at odds with the surroundings, trolley bags and strollers. Around from here, seven kilometres. Seven kilometres. Yeah. So they walked across the border they to here. They walk. It took these families four days to get here. They'll be trucked to a staging post, given food and water, eventually resettled in a refugee camp. Why is this important, so important to help these people? Why? Yeah. It's a human uh, duty for us. Once they realize these are Jordanian, not Syrian soldiers, they scramble across to the waiting trucks. <laughs> Make no mistake, this is a war zone. You can hear distant explosions. The ground is littered with cartridges. So we just found these M16 bullets here. Yeah. So this is where they cross, this mm -hmm. area here. Yeah. It's pretty rough. Yeah, no, it is rough. The, uh... You've got to also take into account that they've probably been bombed for the last three months. They've probably lost uh, several of their family members. Syria's civil war is developing into the greatest humanitarian crisis since World War II. The country's borders are bleeding at a rate of thousands each day. 1.7 million have fled so far. By year's end, it could be close to 4 million, with no end in sight. It is one of the most dangerous journeys on Earth. We've been driving all day. It's almost dark. It's been over 40 degrees Celsius. One of our cars behind me has broken down twice. We now have to abandon it. It's hard to believe the refugees have to cross this terrain to get to Jordan. We eventually arrive at a transit camp for some 200 people. So many are children or babies. One in five is under four years old.
Kids that kind of affect you, doesn't it, in these situations, really? Yeah, because, like, 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 what have they done to deserve all this? How do we salvage their childhood in this sort of situation? You can't. But today, at least, these ones are safe. In Jordan, Steve Pennells, 7 News. And tomorrow our crew finds a secret Jordanian outpost where wounded Syrian rebels get ready to go back into battle. To our special reports on the Syrian crisis now, and 7 News has uncovered alarming evidence of torture at the hands of government forces. We found the victims at a secret rebel base in Jordan, a clearinghouse for the casualties of war. These are Syrian rebels, baying for the blood of President Assad. They're ready, willing, but most are unable. All are casualties of battle and victims of torture. We've been brought to a secret safe house on Syria's border with Jordan. It once was an old school. Now it's a chamber of horrors, with evidence backing up reports of torture by Assad's forces. Like Mohammed, he's lost his left leg and one eye. Can we see the, the bullets? Ibrahim is only 12, shot twice just walking home. This man was tortured on a back-breaking device called the German chair. His wounds are horrific. He shows what they did. You're making me remember, he says. All these men want to fight again, but some clearly can't. Does he want to go back? Right now, Jordan is a stable oasis in the heart of a turbulent Middle East. But the question that no one here wants to answer is what will happen if the short-term crisis becomes something much more permanent. The fighting is predicted to only get worse. At the Zatri refugee camp, hundreds of men scramble to get on buses to take them to the border to join the conflict. The war's been going for over two years now. These men swear it won't end until they win. In Jordan, Steve Pennells, 7 News.